privilege that he has given to us uh, from that we can be here on this teaching this evening. God bless you all. Amen. And we're about to pray and to ask, ask God blessing upon this teaching tonight and his grace and mercy. And if you do want to join me, short prayer. God bless you. Eternal God and our great high priest, our mediator and our advocate, Lord of hosts, Lord of glory, God of all praise and the Prince of peace, humbly bow before you, Lord, at this time. We approach the mercy seat, the throne of grace. We come, Lord God Almighty, because you have given us access where we can come be. Lord, here we are, your children, knowing that you are the great shepherd in heaven. We are your people, we are the sheep of your pastor and the workmanship of your hand. We are your children. It is you, Lord Jesus Christ, that gave your life for us. You, Lord Jesus Christ, that redeemed us from the clutches of the enemy. It is you, Lord, that brought salvation down to us. We are so glad and thankful unto thee that we are saved by grace through faith. Heavenly Father, we just bless your name. It was not for you, Lord, who have been cut off from the land of the living without a hope. Thank you for the blessed hope, this hope that make it not a shame. Hallelujah, for your, your love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Lord, and we thank you for your keeping care and your tender mercies towards us, your children, day by day. Lord Jesus, and we are thankful unto thee Know that, Lord Jesus, oh God, that you loved us with an unconditional love, Lord Jesus, and that your faithfulness to us, past finding on bless us now. We have to take over this, this teaching this evening. We that the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus, will lead us into all truth and into all righteousness. Bless each and every one of us, Lord. Remember those that uh, could not make it here at this do teach him, we pray a blessing for them likewise. We thank you for hearing this prayer. We thank the Lord for answering us in advance. We ask these mercies. For Jesus' sake and in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And let me say welcome one more time. Amen to uh, the Bible class tonight. Amen and amen. And the great God we serve. And he'll do everything to us, for us, because he loves us. So tonight we are with uh, the Gospel of Luke. Luke, the only Gentile writer we have of the Bible. I mean, and Luke was not an apostle. Luke uh, was the Holy Ghost used him to write the Gospel of Luke. Where we are tonight, Luke chapter 18, and in why we start at that particular. Uh, Verse in chapter 18 of Luke. Um, the, the season that we are in at the moment, we are moving towards is uh, Passover. Now I say Passover because we growing up and we hear the word many times used Easter. And Easter is not the name uh, we should be using as a pagan word, pagan name, or uh, a um, Mesopotamian goddess named Histar. The name is Red and that. This demon of a name all over the scripture. Amen. So we don't use the term Easter, we use the word Passover. Um, so we're going to look at the right, and follow uh, the footsteps of Jesus. And his last week, moving towards moving toward the last week of what you call his passion before his crucifixion. So we are going to uh, follow him, uh, leaving Galilee and moving towards, closer towards Jerusalem. So if we turn our Bibles into uh, Luke chapter 18, and we are going to follow the scriptures and to see how he arrived at the Mount of Olives and in Jerusalem and, uh, and how did uh, what happened for Palm Sunday, because we have to know that Sunday coming is Palm Sunday, and the reason why we call it Palm Sunday. 
Many things have happened. Jesus here in St. Luke chapter 18, and we are going to begin uh, with a verse, uh, chapter 18, verse uh, 31, verse 31 of Luke chapter 18. So if you turn your Bibles, if you've got Bibles with you, and want to follow me as into the scriptures and to see what has happened moving towards uh, Passover the following uh, days before Jesus was crucified. Uh, we need to get to Bethpage. We need to get to Mount of Olives first. We're just going to look at some of the things that happened by Jesus on his way uh, to Calvary, not returning to, to where he used to be in Galilee, Capernaum. Now he is heading towards Jerusalem where he was going to be crucified. Here we have Jesus. Um, he is speaking uh, to disciples that was with him. And verse 31 of chapter 18 of Luke, verse 31, and I hope you hear me quite clearly. And we read, he said, then he took unto him 12, that's the 12 of our apostles, and said unto them, this is what Jesus said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. It was important for him to, him to get to Jerusalem at this time because his hour was now fast approaching. He was going to be crucified. So he says, we are going up to Jerusalem and all things that are written of by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. So right now, where he was, uh, things was coming uh, to a close where he was going to be crucified. And now everything that was written by the prophets about him would be accomplished. So Jesus here saying to the disciples, time to go to Jerusalem. And he said, he went and further to say to them, said to them, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. So he knew all of this. So he was sort of forewarning them what was going to happen to him. And uh, they, they didn't know these things, but Jesus had told them. That's why they couldn't give it to right. And it did happen. So Jesus said, look, they're going to spit upon him. Uh, and he says, they're going to mock him, spitefully entreated him, and spit it on him. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. So Jesus had now spoken to them about what was going to happen to him. Now, the problem was what he said to them, they did not believe it. If you go to St. Matthew chapter Peter said, be it far from thee. Yeah, nothing will happen to you because he, he would he would die with it. But Jesus prophesied and told him that the cock go twice, he's going to deny him twice. And that fulfillment did happen. So, and they understood, you know, the Bible said, they understood none of these things, none of these things, and this saying which hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. So they were not, they didn't understand what he was saying. Because you know, he's been with them for three years. And now he's enjoyed the ministry of Jesus. They were with him. They saw so many miracles. But now Jesus is saying that he was going to be taken by the hands of wicked men. Treated in this way. They couldn't understand none of it. When Jesus told him, the Bible said in verse 35, and he came to pass. And he came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, going up to Jerusalem, you're coming from Jericho, Jericho, uh, sea level, the lowest part, where this, especially where the Dead Sea is, the lowest um, part of, of, of Jerusalem. So they got to go up to Jerusalem going from the direction of Jericho. When the children of Israel came from Egypt, 
they had to come in the first encounter was Jericho. The walls at Jericho. And that had to come down to Joshua for them to go and um, capture the, the promised land. So here he was saying, he came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, Luke is telling us this, Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside, a certain blind man sat by the wayside. Now, we need to understand at this particular time in Jesus' ministry, uh, he was going to also fulfill a lot of Old Testament and typologies and shadows. Um, I just want us to own that a bit. And let me just explain this at this particular time that Jesus was heading to Jerusalem to be crucified. At that time is called Passover. What is it called Passover? It's called Passover because the Children of Israel, this particular period of Jesus' time, when Moses went to Egypt to deliver them uh, out of bondage, children of Israel. And you know, Pharaoh gave a lot of trouble. God hardened his heart and sent plagues and flies and frogs and all manner of things upon Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not let them go. When the tenth plague, came upon them, they decided that they would have to let the children of Israel go. So when his heart was being hard, the Lord told Moses that uh, he should get for every house. Now there was about 3 million Israelites that was in Egypt and they had to leave, 3 million of them. But they couldn't just leave like that. Uh, they had to uh, offer sacrifice and uh, lamb had to, lamb had to Slain, blood had to be shed. So with the tenth plague, the Lord told Moses that every house, every house belongs to Israel, the fathers. So there was 12 tribes, and each tribe, you know, had a, had a following. So you have the Reuben, you have Simeon, Levi, you have all the different fathers of the tribe, and they're all under their own, own banner. So what happened was uh, they all have to get. Every house had to get a lamb. If you didn't have a lamb, then you would have to have a goat. Lamb had to be special. You couldn't just any lamb. So it had to be a, a firstborn, first year lamb. Uh, and then it had to be taken at a special, special time on the 10th day of the, of the first month. Now, the first month, because Israel was given a new calendar by God gave Moses. So the beginning of their calendar is the month of Habib, A-B-I-B, -B, that's the Hebrew name for the first month of the Jewish sacred calendar. Because we know that they have two calendars. There's a civil calendar and there's a sacred calendar. The sacred calendar is the one that God gave Moses, which only have seven months in the sacred calendar, beginning with the month of Habib. Another word for Abib, and Abib is the Hebrew word, but the Greek word is Nisan. So where you see Nisan or Abib, that means that's the beginning of the months of the Jewish here calendar, the new calendar that God gave to them. Now, our calendar that we have begins at the first month begins in January. And that's the civil calendar. Now that's 12 months, but Jewish sacred calendar only has seven months. And the, the, the Jewish calendar begins the period of time that we are in now, uh, which is April, and the Jewish uh, calendar, sacred calendar begins March and April, March, April. So this month that we are in right now is the month of Abib. The Greek word is uh, for it is also Nisan. So that's the sacred calendar, which only has seven months. But the Jews have another calendar which carries. 12 months, we are dealing with uh, the cycle time here of seven months. So when the Lord told Moses that you need to get this lamb, and every house need to have a lamb, they need to kill this lamb, kill this lamb, every house, and then they should eat the lamb, uh, roasted with bitter herbs and, they would, with, and with unleavened bread. So they had to do this. And then the lamb itself had to be without blemish. 
They had to examine this lamb, make sure that it was okay, and it was fat. If it was sick, it couldn't be used. So, they had to examine it. so when they took this lamb on the tenth day of the first month, which is the month of Abib, they had to keep this lamb now for further four days. So really it's 14 days. They had to keep the lamb. They take this lamb on the tenth day, the first month. Keep the lamb for a further four days, and that makes it on the 14th day in the evening, they have to kill that lamb. Now, when they kill that lamb, they would have to take the blood of the lamb and put it on the lintel of the doorpost. The lintel of the doorpost and the side door, doorpost, they have to put the blood. And they had to eat this lamb with bitter herbs and unleavened bread, and they had to roast the lamb, and the bones must not be broken. And when they eat the lamb, if there's any left over, they'd have to burn it. As the, the, the Egyptians were not allowed to eat it. Uh, so that's why when we serve um, Lord's Supper, uh, the, the, the unbeliever can't eat it. Only those that belong to the body. So here we have the children of Israel uh, following instruction that God gave Moses. When they did that, they took the lamb, examined the lamb on the tenth of the first month. Uh, and then they kept it for a further four days. And at evening, they had to kill the lamb. Put the blood of the lamb and the lintel of the doorpost. Why? Because that particular evening, that particular night, and that was a night meal. And this particular night, the flying angel was going to pass through Egypt. And then uh, every house that he goes to, and the blood was not on that door. Once it was on the door, it would be angel would pass over that house. If there was no blood on that lintel of the doorpost where the angel could see, somebody would have to die in that house. Once the angel, the destroying angel, see blood, they already believe that somebody died in there. So the lamb had to be taken, examined, kept a further four days. And so because that lamb really foreshadowed Jesus. So now we get, remember what I just said about that lamb? Taken up first first month, and it was uh, on the tenth day. And it was uh, it was taken, uh, it was examined. It was kept for a further four days, and then they would uh, in the evening they would kill that lamb, put the blood on of the lamb, and the linen of the doorposts, and all the children of Israel would do the same in their dwellings. And the great thing about that, if, if the lamb was too much for one house. They could join together and, 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 and they would be able to eat. Because the next day, and they must eat it with their packs packed, their clothes on, their shoes was on, their hat was on, their head, and everything was packed because they were leaving the next morning, uh, the 15th day. So this was on the 14th day when that was done. And by the next morning, they were leaving Egypt. So here we have the spotless lamb and the blood was shed. Now, that period of time, so when, 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 the, when the destroying angel would come down, and when the destroying angel would, would, would see a house uh, that has the blood on it, the, the Bible said that the angel would pass over them. That's where it come from, pass over them. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So that lamb in Egypt, unfortunately, uh, Jesus. So when Jesus was baptized, Remember that John the Baptist baptized him. And when Jesus was walking away, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Here we are, John the Baptist. Pointing out to the followers, his followers, that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. So now Jesus came and did his ministry. And Jesus did his ministry, so we have Luke right here. And what happened to Jesus? That he didn't minister. Jesus has gone back to heaven. We have the word of God on the record. He's here today in the Bible where we can follow the same thing that happened to Jesus. Know that the word of God is true. Here we have uh, Jesus now reaching Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. That this was coming up to Passion Week. Passion Week, the week of his Passion. We'll talk more about that. But let us get up to Mount of Olives first uh, before we get to 
speaking about his passion. So the 35 verse, 35 verse of chapter 18, said we have, and he came to pass that as he went, as he was come nigh unto Jerusalem, unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Now as Jesus come, came close to Jericho. Now Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, you have to pass to Jericho. Now we need to understand that Jericho at one time was cursed because it was Joshua that had taken Jericho uh, when the conquest of Canaan, when they came from Egypt, they had to come to Moab and the first encounter was the Jordan and then it was Jericho. So here we have Jesus sort of following the same route, going into Jerusalem. To Jerusalem, he had to come to Jericho. So 35 said, and it came to pass that as he came nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man, so even he knew that he was on his way to be crucified, Jesus was still delivering people, still opening the eyes of the blind, still doing many things on his way. So look at some of the things that Jesus did, knowing that he, he, he was going to be crucified in a few days' time, he was still uh, delivering people, still opening the eyes of the blind was still, uh, salvation was brought to a lot of people on his way to uh, be crucified. So let's see. Came to pass that as he was nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. You know, the blind man who sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude, because there were crowds now, there were crowds now following Jesus, crowd following him. And he said, and hearing the multitude pass by, he, the blind man couldn't see, so he asked what it meant. What is called? What the noise is all about? And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth, identification of Nazareth, is the Jesus of Nazareth, pass it by, pass it by. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David. You know, because they knew that David's son was coming. And David's son was coming. Amen, to come to deliver them. So when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he called Jesus by his, his royal name, his royal title. So here he said, and he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus in the flesh is David's son, but in the spirit is God himself. Yeah. Is the Son of God, is God Himself, who manifests Himself uh, in that body and call His body His Son. So here we have the blind man who couldn't see Him, but the blind man, think about Him, He was blessed because He could hear and He could speak. So when He asked what meaning this man, they told Him that Jesus of Nazareth passed it back. So he said, and he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. So when anyone cry for mercy like that, Jesus will always take time out for any individual to seek for mercy. Mercy means that you are guilty, uh, but you're looking already, but you're looking help from God. You see, when you use the word mercy, you ask for mercy, it means that you're guilty. So you ask for mercy. And I, I can say this, that uh, it depends on what your needs are, ask for mercy. Because we are, by mercy, we are saved through grace. Uh, without the mercy of God, he could not be here. So we must always ask for mercy. So this blind man asks for mercy. And let's see what happens. He says, have mercy upon me. And they which went by rebuked him. The crowd rebuked him. Because, you know, there was quite a lot of them that was following Jesus at this particular time. And they rebuked this blind man. But the more they rebuked him that he should shut up, the more he cried out because he had a need. You know, don't let no one stop you calling upon Jesus Christ. Don't let no one stop you if you have a need to call upon him. See what they would do. The Bible said, and they which went before rebuked him. 
that he should hold his peace. In other words, quiet, stabilized. But he wanted attention from Jesus. So he kept on crying. But the Bible said, but he cried so much the more. He cried so much the more because he needed something from Jesus. He needed his sight. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy upon me. Christ, he said it. And Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still because Jesus heard the cry of mercy. And although the crowd was trying to shut him up, to tell him to keep quiet, yet we have here uh, the man kept on because he knew what he wanted. And the Bible said, and Jesus stood still. Now you have to understand it's in Jesus, in God we move and we have our being. So when Jesus stood still, everything has stopped. Because we know if he don't move, we don't move. You see, so Jesus stood, the old everywhere stood still for this one blind man. Why? Right? Because he recognized what the crowd, what was going on, and then he recognized that the son of David was there. And he knew that he came to give help to those that need help to the children of Israel. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, Jesus said to him, Will thou, what will thou have me to do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive. My sight. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, You see, if we if we cry out enough, Jesus said unto him, Receive my sight, thy faith. As so here we have this blind man. Couldn't see, eh? but he could hear, and he could speak, and he could shout. Because of that, his faith reached out and Jesus Christ. Uh, gave him his sight back. Jesus said, Receive thy sight, thy faith has made thee whole. And the Bible said, Immediately he re received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all, that, and all the people. When they saw him, they gave praise to God. So God gave the praise and the glory of this blind man. Remember now, Jesus was on his way to Calvary. But then he had time spend time to, to allow someone that was blind to be able to see. So Jesus, no matter what's happening, he'll take time out for us, for you, for, for myself, and for others. Jesus will do that. So it can't be too late to cry unto him. Yeah. Cry unto him, no matter what the situation. Let nobody stop you. They try to shut up this man. But the more they try to stop him shouting, it's the Lord that he cry out for Jesus. And Jesus stood still stood and called him. And the man received his son. But Jesus continued on the journey going up to Jerusalem. We need to get there now on the 10th day. We need to get there on the 10th day of the first month. Remember now that lamb that was taken in Egypt was on the 10th day of the first month. That lamb was taken and was kept and they examined it for a further four days. Now Jesus need to get up there on the tenth day of the first month. So the month that Jesus was traveling was the month of Abib. We are in that particular Jewish month now. Understand the Jewish calendar of Abib and the sacred calendar, Passover time. Remember what I said, not Easter. Easter is a pagan thing. We're dealing with Passover. I talk more about Passover. He said, and Jesus now passed through Jericho. Now you know this, he passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. On his way, ascending up to Jerusalem, there was a publican named Zacchaeus. You must have heard about Zacchaeus so many times. And uh, which was a cheat, as a matter of fact. Would not disappoint. He was the chief amongst the publicans. He was rich. I know these publicans were hated by the Hebrew people. 
the right people didn't like publicans. Why? It's because publicans were hired and by Rome uh, to collect taxes from them. Now, they didn't mind paying taxes because even Jesus paid his taxes. But the problem about taxes for Rome, Rome, they were pagan. They would use their money to establish paganism, and they did not like it. Uh, so what they would do, hire people to gather the, the taxes from the Israelite people, Hebrew people, and they, they were having difficulty in getting the money. We taught those people to be like bailiffs, who, you know, when for money, they'll come to your home and they'll come for the money. And then what the bailiff would do, the money that you hold, the authorities are whosoever you owe it to, um, they came for that money, but their pay was not by Rome. Their pay is to put money on top, and they were extortionate. Their, their pay was to take their pay and put it on top of the money they, they come for. For instance, if they come for 50 pounds, they came for 50 pounds, and, and they get it, but they would put another 30 pounds on top of that 50, make it 80. The 30 pounds would have been theirs. So the Jews hated them, their own, and it was their own people that became publicans. Uh, and so uh, Israel, Israelites didn't like them at all. There was always this conflict between them and publicans. They hated publicans because of the job they were doing. So Jesus at one time, as he passed by, he saw a publican sitting at the receipt of custom. And he was gathering taxes for Rome. And as Jesus passed by, Jesus said, follow me. But when Jesus saw him, and saw him. Jesus loved him. And Jesus said, follow me. And immediately that publican left the till, and the takings and everything and followed Jesus. Now that was a life-threatening thing because if, if Caesar knows that you leave his money and attend it, you're going to follow a man, then you know that your life is in danger. But this man was Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector and uh, for Rome. Was, he was one of Zacchaeus' top men. Uh, so uh, Jesus, so he followed Jesus and left the money. And then you see Matthew, Gospel of Matthew. You notice that Matthew had another name named Levi. Levi means he was from the tribe of Levi. So he was a Levite priest that was be, that was backslidden. And you know that the Levite priests, they should not work, not do anything. They should be ministering at the temple. But then they would be looked after by the other left. 11 tribes, you have to look after them. But here we have Matthew backslide, uh, backslide in Matthew, and the Lord passed by him and called him away from the only thing he was doing. And then he followed Jesus. And then Matthew, you know, he was wealthy too because he invited Jesus to his house. Jesus went to his house. I mean, a whole group of publicans were there. But Jesus went. And Matthew, oh, and return back to God. And notice he wrote, he wrote now the Gospel of Matthew. But now Zac Zacchaeus, who was the chief now, the chief of all the publicans, and because uh, Matthew was working for Zacchaeus. But when Zacchaeus heard that Matthew had gone, walked away from the job, he wanted to know what man is it that could have influenced Matthew to allow him to walk away, knowing that he could endanger his head, walk away from the till and leave Caesar's money unattended. So here we have the crowd, Jesus ascending up to Jerusalem. Amen. So when Zacchaeus got and saw the crowd, because the Bible said that he was very small, a small man, very short. And because of the crowd, he couldn't see Jesus. So what? What Zacchaeus did, he ran ahead. And Zacchaeus climbed a tree. Now we all know the name of that tree. It's called a sycamore tree. And if you go to Jerusalem right now, you see the sycamore tree, the tree that Zacchaeus um, so many times. Zacchaeus climbed. Now, when Zacchaeus and Jesus was on his way, and Zacchaeus was in that tree. Zacchaeus was hiding, and Jesus, when Jesus got to the, to the, to the sycamore tree, the Lord Jesus says, call him by his name, you know. 
He was up in the tree, wanted to see Jesus. But then the tree that he climbed had some great significance about that particular tree. Now that tree, the sycamore tree, the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew name for the sycamore tree is stigma. Stigma is the Hebrew name for the sycamore tree. Uh, and sigma means repentance. So if a man is in the sycamore tree, you notice he didn't climb an orange tree, nor a mango tree, nor an apple tree, he climbed this sycamore tree. Now, and when Israel uh, is repenting, they would repent by using sycamore as a symbol of their repentance. Now, if we read about the book of Amos, and when Amos, who was a, a, a shepherd, uh, he was a herdsman and the fields of the while he was there, the word of the Lord came to him that he should go and rebuke Israel, go and take a message to Israel. But he was just a herdsman. So what, what Amos did, Amos went, because one of the things about Amos, Amos with his profession, Amos said he was a gatherer of sycamore. So the Lord used him because when Israel is always the sycamore, they knew it was time for repentance. So Amos went, and Amos went with a message from God, and they said, we don't want to hear from you, Amos. Take your message to the backwards. Don't bring nothing. But Amos says, look, I was a herdsman on the fields of Tekoa. And he said, Tekoa. And he said, look, I was minding my own business. And then the word of the Lord came to him, that he should go with a message to Israel. So Amos went, and Amos said, look, I'm a, I'm a shepherd. I'm a gatherer of sycamore. So sycamore is a symbol and when Israel sees this sycamore, it reminds them of their uh, So Zacchaeus climbed the sycamore tree. So when Jesus got to the sycamore tree, Jesus did not even look up. No, because Jesus knew he was up there. Jesus called him by his name. And he was up there calling him and said, Zacchaeus, come down for today's salvation is at your house. But the Bible says, verse 3 of chapter 19, and he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was a little statue. And he ran before and climbed into a sycamore tree. The reason why he climbed that particular tree, it's a sign of his repentance, his surrender. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today must I abide in the house. So here we have Zacchaeus was repenting. Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus converted. Zacchaeus said, if I've taken anything from any man, I'm going to restore it. Poor fold. Leviticus said, restore it. One fold, but Zacchaeus decided to do it fourfold. He was truly repentant. And the Bible said here in verse 8 of the 19th chapter, Zacchaeus stood and said unto Jesus, unto the Lord, the O Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by this accusation, I restore him to a foe. So Zacchaeus was has repented. Jesus just had time to save him. Yeah. And the Bible says, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of He was a Jewish man. He's a son of Abraham. But the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus now ascending up to Jerusalem eh, to get to, up to Mount of Olives. And he needs to be there for Sunday. So, so he continues, and many other things Jesus did, but I just point out those two things. That while he was heading for Jerusalem to be crucified, he was still doing good. still saving people at the very last moment. So, in verse 28 of chapter 19, I want to just, just jump down to verse 28 of chapter 19. And when he had thus spoken, 
he went before ascending up the sea continued, going up to Jerusalem. Because yeah. it's our hour now come. And you're going to see how closer the and closer by our day, by our the time did come for him to be crucified. So he said that when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And he came to pass when he came at night to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples. Now he got to the Mount of Olives, at Beth, Beth Page, Bethany, Mary and Martha, they live in Lazarus, they live in Bethany. But you know, Jesus had raised Lazarus as he had died, but Mary and Martha, um, where Jesus used to stop at their place, and Jesus used to spend time with them. God, they, was a, they were a friend of the Lord. Lazarus is friend, was a friend of him. So here we are, we're at Mount of Olives now, amen moving, looking over Jerusalem, and he could see most of Jerusalem city. temple. You could see from the Mount of Olives, you have a panoramic view. When you are at Mount of Olives, you see Jerusalem. So here we have the text. The Bible said that and it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount, called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. But Jesus now, sent two of his disciples. And what he said to them, go ye into the village over against you, in the which ye enter in, you shall find a cold, hide, herein yet never man sat, loose him and bring him to me. Now Jesus said to Peter and John, that they should go over by the village against them, and they see a house go to a time. One scripture says, we're tied between two ways. Jesus said, loose him and bring him, bring that ass coat that was tied up and bring him to me. Now, that's when he got there, they were the sender. And Jesus also said, when you read in the Gospel of Mark, he says, if any man asks you, why are you loosing the coat? Tell them that the master is in need of what he said to them, that hey, you will find opposition, but lose the coat and bring him. So the Bible said, Jesus said, go ye into the village over against you, in the which ye at your entering, ye shall find the coat tied, wherein yet never man sat. You see, Jesus is going to write this coat. So Jesus always find uh, something that no one had ever used before. Notice that Jesus himself, uh, when, he, when he was buried, he was buried into a tomb where never man lived. Got to be new. Got to be first time for him. Jesus was born, Virgin Mary, eh, first out of the, the womb. And then you have Jesus now going to ride this as cold where never man sat. You know, even when Jesus speak and they listen to him, they said, never man speak like this man. So Jesus, well, he was different. When he speaks, what he does, no man can do it like him. Jesus is perfection. So here he said, this ask a never man said, Jesus is going to do it. I'll ask him. I'll talk some more about him later. So the Bible said, in verse 31, he said that if any man asks you, why are you losing him? Thus shall he say unto him, because the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of that coat. And they that were sent went their way, Peter and John went their way, and found he as he said it unto them. What Jesus said unto them, when they went for the ass coat. And they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said. And as they were loosing the coat, as they were loosing the coat, Owners thereof said unto them, Why lose ye the coal? Jesus already told them that because he's going to take on a proposition if they'd seen losing this coal. So as soon as they were losing it, the opposition, the standards by said, Why are you losing this coal? And they said, the, the, the disciples said, The Lord 
of need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. Now this, this particular time was on Palm Sunday. Now Jesus was now up at Jerusalem and at Bethphage, Mount of Olives. And this was Sunday. Uh, the colt that was tied up was brought to Jesus. Let's see what happened. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments yeah, upon him. And they set Jesus up. They put their garments upon the cold, and then they put Jesus to sit on this cold. Now, this was an unbroken cold, wild. But you know, with Jesus sitting on this cold, this cold never railed up. He, he just sit quietly because this, this cold here recognized something about Jesus, by like that Jesus is the creator. But the cold, this cold settled down. Jesus sat on him. And they spread their coat on this coat, and the coat was so calm, right? The coat must have recognized that Jesus is the creator. So they set Jesus there. As he went, they spread their clothes in the way, and they spread their clothes in the way, they put it on the back of the coat, put Jesus on it. And when he was come nigh, even down now to the descent of Mount Olive, when he came to Mount Olive descent at the bottom, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God. And they began to praise God, saying what? With a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had, had, had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. If you turn the Bible to Zechariah chapter nine, Zechariah chapter nine, you'll find that prophecy of Zechariah fulfilled at this very scripture. Zechariah chapter nine, let me just read for you. You can turn the Bible to Zechariah chapter nine, prophesying about this particular situation where this, this ass cult was brought to Jesus and they spread uh, the, 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 the bone on him, the cloth on him, and in the way, palm, palm leaves and everything. And uh, verse 19 in Zechariah chapter 9, he says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout greatly, O daughter of Zion. O, o, o Jerusalem, behold thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the whole of an ass. So here we have uh, Zechariah prophesying about Jesus coming, amen, and that this prophecy would be fulfilled. Let me read it again. The ninth chapter of Zechariah, verse nine, verse nine. It says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the coal of an ass. So here this prophecy is being fulfilled. Uh, Jesus then sending for this ass colt and rode him into his temple in Jerusalem. Now that day is called Palm, Palm Sunday. Now, like I said, we are in that period of time of that agenda that God gave Moses, the month of Abib is now. Uh, it's between March ending and April. That's the month of Abib, which was the first month of the sacred calendar. So the Lord had given Egypt, uh, Israel, uh, Israel, a new calendar. So they didn't have the calendar that they came out of Egypt with. God gave them their own calendar, the sacred calendar. And this is the time of the month that we are in. So when Jesus rode, that donkey was on Palm Sunday. No Sunday coming. Today is Friday, but Sunday is Palm Sunday. It was, it was a Sunday like that one. And they had went and they had fetched uh, the colt, brought him to Jesus and spread their clothes on him and palm leaves and their clothes in the way. And Jesus rode the donkey. Now remember, it was Sunday was the 10th day 
tenth day. So he came, he came to uh, Mount of Olives to Bethany. And now you have to understand that the lamb in Egypt were kept for four days. It became four days. So look at this. I want us to uh, follow me here a little bit on the tenth day. You have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So the four days that Jesus, after he rode the donkey, he was dead by Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now, they've all understood when we were small, coming up and hearing a lot of things about Jesus being crucified. Just want to let us know that Jesus, uh, the time that we said Jesus was crucified was not the time. Jesus was crucified on the, on the fourth uh, day after the tenth day. So he was crucified on the Wednesday evening. Now, we always say people, Good Friday. You know, every Friday that God make is good, but that was a scripture was not been taught the way it should have been taught. So uh, our theology tonight is going to be looked at, and I want to follow me closely here. And read it by yourself, and you can understand me well. Now, Jesus himself said uh, in St. Matthew 12, verse 40, it says, As Jonah was in the world's belly, uh, but three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Jonah was in the world's belly, three days and three nights, the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. So Jesus then foreshadowed that the, the, the Lamb in Egypt foreshadowed him. And that was taken on the 10th day, and then it died four days later. Lamb had to be killed at the evening, and it had to be eaten eat, eat with bitter her herbs, and he had to be roasted, and he had to have unleavened bread, and then they had to put the blood of the, the lamb and the lintel of the doorpost. Jesus Christ now, our Passover. Jesus is our Passover. You find that in... in First Corinthians chapter six, you find that Jesus, our Passover, has been uh, crucified for us. Jesus didn't die on the Friday; he died on the Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening, uh, because you cannot get three days and three nights from Friday. Amen. So that was a wonderful thing to say that Jesus Christ died on a Friday and rose Sunday. No. Jesus, it's one of the things that has happened uh, because the governor reading John chapter 19, John said the Sabbath was on high day. Now, every year when it is Passover, because Passover is a memorial, every year they had to keep this. Whenever they keep the Passover in Israel, every year they do that. What happened? The next day, it's always a Sabbath. So you'll find the confusion that a lot of people had uh, that they did not realize that there's two Sabbaths in the one week. So you have the weekly Sabbath, which on the third day. You also have the Passover Sabbath. So the Sabbath now that Jesus spoke about, Jesus had to be taken off the cross. Sabbath begin Friday, not Friday evening. He was not crucified Friday, he was crucified on the when so Wednesday evening, Jesus was taken down from the cross, and then from there you got three days and three nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you had three nights, and then you have early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, you find that Jesus Christ was risen within three days, not two days, not one day, three days. He came back as Jonah was in the world's belly for three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God, amen, came up to Bethany. When he came to Bethany, and he sent for the Ascot, and he rode it into Jerusalem. Uh, and Jesus died. And four days after he arrived at Jerusalem, and he was crucified. And, and, um, Today, we have the further understanding. When Jesus got to Jerusalem, the Bible said, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it because he realized that 
what was he said was and, and if thou hadst known he said they had known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belongs unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine ears Jesus knew that Israel the Jews were not ready for him and he knew that his time and hour was come that he should be crucified and and then it happened and the Wednesday at so all when he was crucified, we have to remember that uh, it was two thieves, two, two manufacturers that was crucifying him. Um, and Jesus was in the middle. Um, but Jesus then had to, the, 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 the Roman soldiers had to get Jesus up to Calvary, where he was going to be crucified by 9 a.m. the morning, because he was in Pilate's court. All morning because he was first in Caiaphas Palace. He went to Annas first and then Caiaphas Palace. And then he was brought to Pilate, judgment all in the morning. While he was there, he was tired. But he had to leave Pilate, judgment all and go up the Via de la Rosa of the Calvary. And we know that he fell beneath the Lord and Simon the Cyrene to help him to carry the cross. But Simon didn't carry the cross, Simon carried the wood. And Jesus carried the cross. Only him alone bear the cross that is the sin of the world. While Simon was helping him to carry the wood, he was also carrying Simon's sin. So here we have uh, Jesus uh, who came to die. And then he was crucified. He was running at 9 a.m. He died at 3 p.m. that day. Many things happened we could talk about that happened. But for that. Um, we we'll get on the pick up on chapter 22 of, of St. Luke. Let's see. Uh, remember what happened. Now, the, the death was so close. So, like I said, there were four days, and there were four days, then it come down to three days, then it come down to two days, then it come down to one day, then it come down to an hour, one hour, and then Jesus was at Gethsemane. So let me go to St. Luke chapter 22, moving to the scripture, and St. Luke chapter 22 tells us, now the feast of unleavened bread. Now, this feast of unleavened bread also called, they call it the Passover. You can see that the feast of unleavened bread, they had to eat unleavened bread for seven days. Seven days. Have no unleavened bread, yes. Oh, he said, now the feast of our living bread, um, chapter 22, verse 1, June 9, the feast of our living bread, the feast of Passover, June 9, which is called a Passover. Sometimes the feast of our living bread is, is called uh, Passover. Uh, Passover is called the feast of our living bread. And the chief priest, now this is where uh, Jesus now was Haunted Jesus told by a traitor. Let us read this text a little bit. It says, and the chief priests and scribes thought, oh, they might kill him, then they want to kill Jesus. Why? Because Jesus rode it down to the devil. They want to know what authority and Jesus remember that burned the tables and the money changers and everything and put them out. Oh, what authority does he have to do this? Yeah. But the Bible said here in chapter 22, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. The crowds were there all, all around Jesus. Remember, um, was so popular. They, they, they didn't like his popularity. Popularity was putting them out of business. But they hated him and they wanted to kill him. The Bible said that they feared, but they feared the people. So sometimes it's good to have people around you. When people are around you, they never know come at you so much. If you are by yourself, by isolated, here we have Jesus. And then because of the people, these tribes and Pharisees that murder in their heart wanted to kill him. Then enter the Bible said, you know, Satan instigator. Amen. Who was behind you? 
Then Satan. Then, then entered Satan into Judas. While they were on the Lord's supper table, Satan entered into Judas. Into Judas. Because Judas had his door open. Now, if you understand, even in Egypt, when they killed the lamb and they, they were in, indoors, no one was allowed to go outside that night because if they destroy an angel, find you outside, you, were, you would have been destroyed. It was a nightmare that everyone had to remain inside. Now you see that Judas here uh, set a last up a table and he was there traitor, but then when he was re being revealed by Jesus, who he was, the Bible said he went out and it was night. Let us see the scripture. Then entered Satan into Judah's surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. So Jesus now sat down with the twelve. And he went his way, Judas now went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Now, you notice no one sent him. They didn't send for him. But he had this plan in his mind a long time ago. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him. And this thing was in Judas uh, to betray Jesus. But you know, our redemption was on his way. And the plan of redemption, uh, only God understood it. And we have been delivered. But here we have, Jesus knew who he was from St. John chapter six. The Lord said, have I not chosen 12 of you and one of these are devil? So, you know, nothing don't surprise God. You can't surprise him. Because he knows no one to him all his ways. So the Bible said, here that the Judas went to the captains and the high priests that he might find a way to betray unto them. And they were glad because they tried to do this to Jesus, uh, to get him to kill him, but they couldn't because of the multitude. But when they saw one of his own men, Judas, coming to them, and they must have wondered where he's going. But when he, they, he came to them, and when he made it, it goes out to them that he will bring and allow, find a way to bring Jesus to them to betray him, the Bible said they were glad. But what they did was they commanded to give him money. Money. You see, the love of money. But yet, Judas was also the task. But for the, uh, for, for the, for the group, because that, you know, the Lord never really had uh, any problem with Judas. I've never seen where the Lord even had to rebuke him. But then the Lord knew him. And so what happened? When uh, the, the, the captains and the priests saw him come. They gave, they were, they come when they come and something to, for money, you put your life on it, meaning it's, if you can't turn back. Because if, if you turn back, and this covenant means death. So he said, and they were glad and covenanted. He puts his life on it. Uh, covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. What was stopping Judas? The absence of the multitude. That was what that was stopping him. Because he sought opportunity how to do it. Because he wanted, and once he took that money from them, that was it. You know, the Bible said, love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil, it's the love of it. So, to betray him. Uh, but the, the multitude was that hindrance to Judas. Why he couldn't do it? Because he would have done it, tried to do it before the time. But time was moving closer to the, uh, Jesus being crucified. The Bible said in verse 7, then came the day of unleavened bread. So the day has come. Now all through Jesus' ministry, Jesus is saying, my hour is not yet come. He was not come, not, but now you find him. Said here, then came the day of unleavened bread when they passed over. Must be killed. So the time had come now where Jesus 
must be killed. Because he's going to stop it. A redemption plan was on the way. Right? And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. So he sent Peter and John. Now he didn't send Judas and many sent them. He, he, he sent them in such a way that Judas would know. Because Judas was seeking opportunity to do it. And what happened is that it could not be done before the time. That God is in control of it. So with all what promises that Judas had made to the captains and to the high priests and to all the priests, it couldn't work. Now the day had come. So the Bible said, and they said, and they he said, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where will that thou, thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet thee bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth. So the Lord Jesus gave them instructions and direction that when they come to the city, they see a good man carrying a pitcher of water. Now, such a man, you couldn't miss him. Because in those days, men don't carry water. Women. So it would be so unusual to see a man carrying a pitcher of water in his shoulder. But the Lord said, that's the man you have to follow. And he said, at the verse 10, the old when he are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entered. And he shall say unto the good man of the house, the master said unto thee, where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished where they're going to have the Passover. Now we, we, we have to we have and we have the Lord's Supper. You're going to see they're going to be a, 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 from one thing to the other. The Passover Supper, that's, that, that's the memorial thing from Egypt that they had to uh, do that every year and observe that every year. Uh, even now, the Jewish people was, was a favor with the Lord. They still do their Passover thing. See, we, Jesus, who's our Passover? No, Jesus is our Passover. Some don't believe in Jesus. Some don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. So they are, they are there. They're in their blindness. But the time will come when the Lord's going to open their eyes. Now, and they went and found that he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, so you know this? It come from the day, from the day, was come. Then came the day, verse seven. Then came the day of unleavened bread. But by the time you get to chapter uh, fourteen, uh, uh, verse fourteen, it said, "And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him." Now, so it come from the day to the hour. So everything was coming to his climax. Okay? So he says, when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat the Passover with you before my supper. They desire to eat it. For I say unto you, I will not anymore eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, you know, I'm not eat. Um, remember now, that was the Passover says, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So it is a fulfillment of Passover. At the Lord's Supper, we need Passover. And this is what Jesus did in, in the 17th verse. And he took the cup, and Jesus gave thanks, and said, take this, divide it among yourself. So Jesus now is serving them, and he said, divide it among yourself. 
take this and divide it among yourself. And, and, and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let me read verse 17 again. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. The kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and, and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. On the same table where the Passover commemoration was taking place, the same table, Jesus now instituted the Lord's Supper. You notice know when the, the lamb was on the table, that was roasted. Bitter herbs and everything was on the earth, and that's what else was there. What the Lord Jesus did, didn't touch that lamb, meat or anything like that. He took the cup and he poured wine in it. The, vine, the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the vine. And he also took bread and break it. These two elements and there with all what was on there. And Jesus instituted now the Lord's Supper. I told him that now. Eat of this bread, drink of this wine, manage his blood, and the other is flesh. And now it's a memorial thing now continuously. That's what it says. As often as you do. So this is not set and no yearly thing. Uh, no, it says as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance of him. So he said, uh, let me read that again, verse 19. And he took bread and we gave thanks and break it. Bread. Uh, and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in, we do it in remembrance of him. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So the cup, is the New Testament. So this is the New Testament thing that we do. We serve the Lord's Supper. Why we do it? And as often as we do it. He didn't say do it one every week or every month. But he said do it as often as we do it. Do it in remembrance of him. Remember what he did for us at Calvary and looking toward this coming again. So we sit at the table. Amen. And that's where we are. We're at the table doing the Lord's Supper. Likewise, also the cup of the supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Uh, but behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. But he said, with this that he has now instituted, he said, the hand of him that is on the table. He said, oh God is a good God, because you and I would have exposed him long time. But the Lord didn't do that. The Lord spoke, and when you read one of the gospel writer, make sign to one another to find out who it is. But you know, who does betraying Jesus? You know, can happen. You know, there was David as a trusted man with him. Name was Ahithophel, and Ahithophel went against David. And uh, uh, what he did, he got to Absalom, David's son. And what he did was legal Absalom um, to revolt, re to rebel against his father uh, and to mature him. And when David heard that the heat of her was with Absalom, David could not do anything but pray to God and ask God to turn the counsel of the heat of her. David said he could have understood what's happening if he was an enemy that had done it. But he said the man that lifted up his heel against him, and his own familiar friend, he said, we went to church together. We took counsel together. We prayed together. And he lifted up his heel against him. David had to turn to God. And then David had a friend named Hushai. And David um, sent Ushai to get into the camp of Absalom 
to listen to what they are saying in their war, war, war cabinet. And when he went, he listened. And when he heard what they were saying, and then Absalom said, Hushai should give counsel. Hushai, Lord was with him when he gave counsel. And when he spoke, he said, the counsel of Ahitophel is not good at this time. And when he gave counsel uh, to Absalom and the rest of the warlords, Adam, they said, the counsel of Ahitophel is not good. And they took the counsel of Hushai. I know what Ahitophel did. Ahitophel saddled his ass, rode home, put his house in order, and hanged himself. So this is Ahitophel. So, you know, and, and he was a, a trusted friend of David. But, you know, an enemy can't really betray you. One that's betray you has got one that is close. What the betrayal is all about. Someone far away does it. You can overlook that. But when someone close, someone near to you, uh, have done that, then you know, amen, that is a very, very, very sad state of affairs. Who does hear? He was always with David, um, Jesus, um, and God wait to bring up Jesus and hold him for what? 30 pieces of silver. That's what we got. You know, you can't sell Jesus. What Judas did was sell himself for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, but Jesus knew what he was doing all the time. And when he did it, so the Bible said, um, when, but Jesus said, behold the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goeth as it was determined. But Jesus said, woe be unto that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Because it's already determined by the determinate counsel in heaven. Jesus said to Pilate, to this end was I born. Why he came. I mean, you find that Caiaphas prophesied in St. John chapter 11, verse 4. Prophesied that one was coming amen, to die for the sins of the world. And the Bible said, Caiaphas, this man prophesied. And Caiaphas was put in position by Rome. But when God gets rid, everybody has to move. He prophesied about this. When he talked, he listened to what they were saying. So you all don't know anything because one man was coming that should die. The sins of the world. And then you find that when Jesus, to his course, he tried 72 um, other Sanhedrin uh, men and other priests and other leaders who tried Jesus at night. And that was awful for anyone to be tried. But Jesus Christ came. And when they finished with him in Caiaphas' court, it is it came to Pilate judgment hall at 6 a.m. in the morning. Pilate had to wake up crying. Pilate says, I find no fault in him. Innocent. You know this? And four times Pilate said, when you read the text of St. John, Pilate said four times, I find no fault. And so uh, Pilate said, What has he done? Let him go. Let me give a rabbit. They said, No. It says, we want to crucify Jesus. I said, Barabbas, the worst thing I've ever said. Barabbas was a terrorist. He was in prison. Uh, he was rebelling against the state, insurrection. He was there for sedition. So he was there. And he now, uh, the people said, give us him. And don't be surprised today, you see terrorism all over the place. Because Jesus, Wanted, uh, Jesus wanted him to go to Calvary because that's where he was heading to. All Pilate was trying to get him free. Jesus didn't know. just an that. Jesus said, to this end was I born. He came to die. And, and he wanted, and he did it for you and I. But for God so loved the world that he gave himself as a ransom. So here we have uh, the Lord's Supper being, being instituted that we must do it. We do not do the Passover. The Passover, you have the Jewish people today who will go along with things like that. We do not. We serve the Lord's Supper. Remember Jesus Christ. 
and what he did for us at Calvary. What happened? They reject Jesus going to Calvary. They rejected him. And they said, we have no king but Caesar. They says, let his didn't be upon us at all. So they totally rejected the Messiah. I didn't see part of But the Lord is not true with them yet. Because after the church is raptured, very soon now I believe, that the Lord is going to bring them back. Uh, because there's a covenant he has with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And a covenant with him. As those are his chosen people. He was the one who blinded them. Uh, and see, the church, Jesus came here to help to save them. Salvation was to the Jews first, which I must say, that's not that. Um, what God had said about salvation at first was true because it was the Jewish people, the 12 apostles minus one that opened the church to the Jews and to the Gentiles because on the day of Pentecost there were 17 missions all over at, at Jerusalem at that time of Pentecost. And then and he, and he went to Cornelius out in Caesarea and Church were the Gentiles. So here we have, but the thing is that the Gentile begins to believe by faith. Where are the God's people, what has happened to them? They want to attain unto righteousness by works because they have to give up the law. Because Jesus Christ is the end of the law and righteousness to everyone that believe it. I thank God by redeeming love. I thank God for a king and redeemer. And he has redeemed us from the touches of the enemy and has raised up a horn of salvation for us out of his servant David. I'm so glad, amen, that I came, and I'm so glad that we have brethren like him to join these zoops. I want us to pray one for the other, amen. Prior is what we need, amen. God's always to pray, and we are not. Remember, on Sunday, it reminds us of Park Sunday. I rode that donkey into the temple. That donkey was you and I. From the day the Lord rode me into the temple, into the gifts of our church, and come out. You know that Jesus left the donkey inside there. He didn't take the ass out. He came out and leave him in there. That's why when the Lord rides us into church, he leaves us in and we should stay. And God, the church is the we call the house of refuge. When the very render of blood chasing us and we get into the temple, we have to stay in there and we are under the, the cover of the high priest. And if we if we leave, then the revenge of blood and the right to destroy. So we have an high priest. And the only time you could leave is the high priest. So an high priest is forever on them. So thank God for that so we can't leave. You have to stay. Amen. We are the high priest that left us unto him. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, hoping that on Sunday morning when we go to church, remember today, and Jesus then rode the donkey. In a day like this, we are in the sacred uh, um, feast time of Passover. But Jesus Christ is he is the Passover lamb. He's also the eleven bread, and he's also the first fruit. There are three things as the spring feast. The spring feast is uh, Passover, unleavened bread, and uh, the final first fruit. The next feast is the feast of Pentecost, which is days after. The Holy Ghost came as the feast of Pentecost. So all those these feasts, sometimes we say they all belong to. Uh, the Jews, no, they belong to the church. Pentecost, Holy Ghost, Passover, Crucifixion, Church. And then the next feast, the Feast of Trumpet, and that is the Rapture. And then you have the Feast of Atonement, Tribulation. That's what we get away from because that will start after the Rapture, after the church is Rapture. The nation starts, and the next one, the Feast of Tabernacle. So we have the feast, the seven feasts of the world belongs to the church. And the Jewish people hold on to them very tightly. If you look closely at them, you realize 
peace of time and nothing after millennium king. And we will be back on this earth with Jesus after seven years, which we don't no, think we're going to be back here because the only moon after the marriage in heaven upon this earth. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just say, will you? Let me just say, honor me. God bless you. Keep it. Bless you in the name of Jesus. In the last name, Gura. God bless the sister. It's a faith. God bless the angel. Watch it. And the basil. Bless you. God bless you. The normal. Then we have. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Heaven bless you. And pray one for the other. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We worship. To us, the words remain in our hearts, Lord. At your words, O oh God, which is quick and powerful. We pray, God, to make that the Bible alone, by heaven. O oh Lord Jesus, the word of God, our strength, God, grown by hearing this, by the word of God. We pray that blessing of God. Nicely. Please, at this time, Lord, we pray. Bless each and every one of us. Let your will and purpose be worked out within us as we give thanks unto thee right now. For Jesus' sake and we Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace in Jesus. Praise God bless you. On McLean, I can see her here in the name. Amen. Amen.